Good morning, Rob. Welcome to another episode of Laneway Talks. How are you? Good, thanks, Vince. Thanks for having me once again. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks, so I suppose we've got a lot to catch up on. Um, what's been happening in your world? Um, I think, you know, like, do I go backwards to yeah. to go, or do I go from two weeks ago to now? I don't know. Oh, I reckon two weeks to now. Two weeks to now. Okay, we'll be having grouse rehearsals because uh, we've got a gig coming up. The gr- the grouse. The grouse. Yeah. yeah. And that's G R O U S E. Fantastic. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So, we had a logo and all that. It's a band that we formed probably 2002, 2003. Um, and we did the cover band circuit here for about 10 years um, and had a bit of a break. We reformed and um, I recorded a lot of stuff with guys in the studio actually. In 2005, 2006, mm-hmm. um, and we're doing a few of those songs now. Um, okay, so we've got "Unclean" coming, which is going to be the first track, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll move on to further tracks. So, genre to let people know: classic rock, rock, hard rock. What are you going to What are you going to classify it as? Um, I think it's more bluesy rock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rhythm and blues or bluesy rock? Well, rhythm and blues is a bit of a strange distinction in the genre. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, in the old fact thing, it's it's not a a boogie rhythm and blues thing. It's more of a traditional blues. Yeah. Okay. All right. Play. Well, we look forward to that release and many more. So, uh, hopefully, that happens in the next what six to eight weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, well, we got- yeah. What else has been going on? You had your uh, you had your march through the streets of Adelaide. We did the National Farms Christmas pageant. Yeah, uh, that was good. It's a lot of work and it's a brutal march. I direct that music. My wife choreographs all the dances for. Um, yeah. That's oh, good. fantastic! We've been doing it every year. Since two thousand and eight, um, it's a, it, it's a, I would imagine it's a chore, It'd be hard work, but mate, you uh, as you always do, you're delivering, and I think you're giving young people a great opportunity too to get out there and you know um, enjoy what it is, plus enjoy the music that goes with it, a different form of music to what we usually talk about, um, and yeah. and Virgin Soldiers. Um, I just thought the the marching band. Playing in the um, playing snare drum. That's where I learnt a lot um, about having good technique, snare drum technique, drum kit technique, and all that. So I think those basics are really good, and they're almost students too. I might add. Well, um, as I was a young kid in the, and we used to have the marching band at school, so we had assembly each day, and the the um, we had a little band of drummers who would do the you know the roll. And uh, I do. I did went to. Uh, I, I did go to. You know, uh, audition to get in, and they said I was terrible. So that was the end of that. And I was terrible because I'd only just, must have only been nine, I suppose, and I'd only just started learning, and uh, I was holding the sticks wrong. Everything, everything was wrong about it. Anyway, that was the marching band at school. The grip. Right? Yeah, well, that's right. My grip was absolutely atrocious. It wasn't right. But anyway, I got better after that. As I learned, um, yep. Yes, and Virgin Soldiers. Um, yeah, I've spoken to Gib. I've spoken to Jeff as well. Um, we've got a new role coming up for uh, another way. I know Langway have done a great job on the new video. Well, yes, that video, as you put it, it's on another level. It's looking fantastic. It is, yeah. Um, it's quite eye-opening. Mm. Uh, I love the. I'm pretty sure that that footage of that gig was the Armadale footage. There. That's correct. That's my understanding too. It was Armadale as you originally gave it to me. Because I've got so many gigs that we taped, um, recorded um, through that era, and I've transferred them all from um, Super 8 and whatever 
Well, we used something else. We VHS, did. wasn't it, if I remember correctly? Because you used to get it from Brashes, the VHS. Um, film well, they went all the cassettes. It wasn't VHS. It was something else it was called. Um, and, yeah, I've got, I've got them all transferred up uh, onto video and then I got transferred from video to DVD. Uh, and there's a whole pile of stuff there that still needs going through. And as we've spoken about the enormous amount of product that you've got sitting there as well to go through to all these for Virgin oh, Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. I mean, I sweat just thinking about it. But anyway, another way is on its way and hopefully yep. we'll have that out in the next six to eight weeks too. So you've got a couple of releases coming. Yep. You there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay, so what do I want to bring up this week? I'll tell you what I've got this week. Um, uh, I need to put my glasses on for this. Um, we uh, there's been a there's a new um, scam going on. This is for all musicians. So this is a new scam that's happening on uh, Spotify playlists. So uh, what used to happen is you would approach playlists and. Then they'd say, yeah, well, you know, if you pay us $200, we can get you on. Uh, and the scammy playlists would then use their bots and, you know, cheat, cheat uh, registrations and everything and <clears throat> get you a whole heap of streams, which were all fictitious, of course. And Spotify is trying to combat it. Um, you know, I, I'm, it's one good thing about Spotify. There's not a lot of good things about Spotify, but um, they're trying to combat it. And what's happening now is that these play, some of these playlists are then adding you as a... So we have laneway playlists, Rob. So if you get a new Virgin Soldier song and we like it, uh, Dan will, he curates it, he will put it on there. And you do get a lot of streams from our playlists, okay? So they work really well. And so <laughs> what these other playlists are doing, these... Uh, shonky ones they put you on there so suddenly you start getting 500 or a thousand streams and uh, you go wow that's great and you go and have a look at your spotify for artists and you go to playlists and you go oh wow there's look at that playlist i got on there and i didn't have to do anything then what they do is they approach you after that send you a message and um and say you know if you want to pay some money we can you know, get you a whole heap more streams. Of course, what you do straight away is you have a look at the playlist. So we, we had this happen during the week, or yeah, er, early in the week, on Sunday, Monday. And um, uh, one of our bands had suddenly got onto this playlist and in the first day uh, I saw it had 376 streams. I thought that was very strange. It's too, too much to get a new band and so therefore... It's not going to happen like that. And so I investigate the, the playlist and I see that the playlist has 10,000 tracks in it. Well, that's a red a red light going off, isn't it, Rob? Uh, I'm not sure, is it? Yeah, absolutely. A playlist, they, they do recommend Spotify, never have more than about 100 tracks on there. Okay, okay. so th this had 10,000 tracks. And it had, I don't know... Six million followers. So I dig a bit deeper into the playlist, who they are, and they've got these other playlists, and they've got 12 and a half million followers. You know, and it, yeah, go on. No, no, that's a lot. Yeah, that's right. So you go, that's, and you know straight away they're not real because no, there is no playlist that big, Rob. So I go, oh, God, what's going on here? So I do some investigation. So, um, uh, I, I I get on to Dr. Google and investigate them and I get some information. And this is what I came up with. And uh, and I'm not going to mention, just to be careful on legal uh, grounds, um, you know, the company behind the playlist was coming out of Sweden. But, okay. But the, um, the originators were out of Morocco. And then... 
uh, someone had had, well, a lot of artists had had the same situation happen to them and yep. they had investigated too and everybody was looking at this and but the they'd employed a company to hide their details. Uh, let me have a look here because I've just got it here on my screen. Um, yep. uh, a deep dive into their website. Um, uh, they had a pri right. So uh, they'd found, that, you know, everybody searching them, they'd found that they'd hired a privacy company to block the register uh, information on each of their websites. So they had websites, right? Um, and, but it was coming out of Switzerland, but then it was coming out of Morocco. Then they actually got to the artist. I'm not going to mention who the artist was, all right, but they're out of Morocco. And... Um, uh, and what, what is so bad about this? Okay, so and, and all that information there uh, I sent on to Spotify. Um, what is so bad about it is what Spotify have started to do is if they find this situation, say you get 5,000 streams from that and their, their, let's call it their search engine finds that it's coming from a playlist which is full of bots because they can't actually see who the real members are and all that kind of stuff, and they have their way of doing that, that you will have a strike put against you. Now, we had one of our artists a month ago have a strike, and they charged us 10 euro for that. The artist had uh, bought, um, bought into a playlist. He said, but I, he goes, I didn't know it was false. He said, it was a service provided. So, in, you know, he'd never done it before. So I, I had to go through the whole scenario with him and explain what, what happens. So we, in this scenario here, which is getting worse because they're just putting you on there, right? so you don't even know, Spotify go, well, that's a, that's a strike. If you don't pick up on that uh, or you don't do anything about it, uh, then you might get a second strike. If you get a third strike, your song will be banned on Spotify. So say you're a young artist, Rob, who's starting out, so you've had yeah. this happen to you, and this is happening. You only need to go online and read about it. And their song is banned on Spotify. That's the end of it. Banned for life. So it's never coming back. You try and talk to Spotify and there's nobody to talk to. Not really. Uh, and, and they kind of, you know, there is a contact us and they go, oh, well, we'll look into it. But most people I see and Dr. Google are saying, well, they just, it doesn't, you know, nothing happens. Now, in this case... I'd somehow I had picked up on this the day after it was added, all right? Oh. And um, and so I got onto it straight away, did this research, got onto uh, Spotify and reported it. And they, so they send you a form to fill out, a report playlist form. I then got onto our distributor and got them to put in a complaint. And I got onto the artists and said, get onto Spotify for Artists right now and report the playlist. And within three days, it was down. It wasn't on, on their, um, uh, their profile anymore as a, a playlist ad. So that's good. But, you know, that's all great to talk about that and say we got a bit of a win there. But there's going to be hundreds of these, maybe thousands, uh, coming on, you know, I mean, it's a big world and you can't pick them up all the time. You know, it's a process to try and get, get off them and then you have to determine are they real or not. So yep. you know, go on, Rob. To what end do they do this? What are they? Uh, why? Because they, they, they then come back to you um, and they try and get you to, in this particular case here, I'll read you what... Uh, one of the bot run playlists without their permission and begin to generate them fraudulent streams to hook them into purchasing more fake promotion from their website, okay? Yeah. They include their website in the playlist description and user description that takes artists to a portal to pay upwards of $200 for bot-generated streams, all while claiming they are organic and that they work with artists under Warner Brothers label, Warner Brothers Music, and other high-profile labels. The fraud Warner goes further because artists are randomly selected, right, 
to be on these mega bot playlists, and they are mega bot playlists, which causes the artist to get bot streams to their music without permission, causing many artists to have their music removed or flagged, which damages their art and their livelihood. So did that explain it to you? It does, yeah. It's a, you know, they're just scammers, and what they're looking at, you might go, oh, $200, but they're looking at a 1,000 people doing that. You know, they're looking at 100,000 people doing that. It's big money, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a shame that people have to resort to those. It, isn't it? You, you just, it, look, the whole thing is a shame because if you don't pick up on it, your hard work can be, you know, um, taken off Spotify. Now... My other side of that goes, well, you know, Spotify is purely your marketing tool. You're never going to get rich out of Spotify. The one in a trillion, not a million anymore, one in a trillion that breaks on Spotify on their own. Otherwise, it's just run by the major labels. Uh, you know, I, I'm having laneway artists at the moment telling me, can you take me off Spotify? I don't want to be on there anymore because, you know, they make 66 cents and um, all you're doing is propping up Spotify's business model. So they don't want to be on there. So we, we got issues around this. And, um, and with Laneway Red, uh, you know, oh, and which will take years, we aim to combat this. Um, one, of the, one of the latest things to happen also was that Spotify have started to put up videos, Rob, and... Yep. They uh, put it up against your track. You can then watch it, and then you can watch it full screen too. So they're getting into the video business because they need, you know, it's like any of these companies or any corporations. They have to look at the the new growth area for them because obviously audio growth has, you know, is starting to plateau, and so they add the videos. So I go on there and see some of our bands have got videos on there. Yeah. And I go, well, that's not on because we we want to get their video streams through YouTube. We, we definitely, where you need to, it's a very big decision, Rob, to go, oh, because some artists will go, yeah, but if they see my videos on Spotify, oh, they then might start listening to my music and whatever. You know, it's just a hope, it's just a hopeful dreams. Um, there is nothing good about Spotify and there's no way they're going to let some little artists just because the video's on there, you know, help them viral or whatever. And so what you're doing is you're bastardising the profile that you can get out of your YouTube and by putting your videos up on Facebook. Now, on YouTube, you get recording copyright pay. On Facebook, you get recording copyright pay. Um, and what I like about it, uh, you know, we'll never be able to get to the bottom of it, <laughs> what they pay you, you know, how, how big it is, but, uh, you know, per stream and all that kind of stuff. But what I like about it is it separates and doesn't give more power to Spotify. So if we were to allow, let's say, Laneway Music has in excess of 2,000 videos, <laughs> and we've got another 1,000 we could easily get up, we just yep. don't have the time, and... Um, if we were to put that all in the hands of Spotify, well, we're completely held to ransom. It's just completely held to ransom. I mean, um, YouTube Music, uh, YouTube Music, uh, and, and, and there's the free part of YouTube Music and there's the premium, is starting to earn us quite a lot of money, earn the artists quite a lot of money. And it's encroaching up to Spotify for us. Uh and the platform um, uh, puts together the videos and the audio because you, if you've got a, a YouTube account. And that's really good because they still separate the income. Whereas on Spotify, you, we all know, I mean, I don't have to go into it, you know, everybody knows you, you make nothing out of Spotify. Imagine giving them all your videos. Then you're really held to ransom and... How do we ever get out of this? So I've made the decision here that we will pull all our videos off Spotify. We want them all off. We, you know, 
I want to know who authorised them to go on there. Well, of course, it'll all come down to small print in terms and conditions. Right? Oh, yeah, right. So uh, with the distributor we work with. So uh, I've just put, put the email out, right, take them all down. I want them all down. I do not want any delivery of videos to um, Spotify. And we have to make those hard calls, and they are hard calls, because people live on that hope and a dream that, well, you know, Spotify's the biggest and therefore it could help me on Spotify. But no, all you're doing is propping up th that corporation and you, you won't be making anything. And, you know, we all know that the majors have all bought shares in Spotify and it is a, it is a food fest for those l major labels and Spotify. So, um, so then you get this kind of activity where, you know, we've just spoken about the bots and all that. And yeah. artists can be banned off Spotify without even knowing what what happened, you, you know, and it and it is happening, and um, uh, oh, really? you know, that just I, I I couldn't believe it. It's just another blow to the young artist or to the independent. Uh, don't have to be young, uh, independent artist. It's just another blow, and it probably then starts to meld into what's going on in the music industry, you know, and how corrupt is it becoming? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and... Um, uh, my, it, it, go on, Rob. I just tried something out. It's always been corrupt, I guess. Well, well yeah, of course, it, of course it has. But I would suspect Version. now it's gone to another level. Now, but I love this... My research shows that the major labels have been making, since digital has really taken over, have been making more profit than they've ever made in the past. But there's people out there, and I suspect it's pushed out via the majors, that say, because they're starting to retrench a lot of staff, all right, that they don't really want to become a... They don't really want to stay as a label, which I don't believe, they, I reckon they do. They don't want to uh, still retain that kind of ethos that they're a label and they're developing artists. They want to be distributors and then pick up the artists that are doing well and bring them in and they, therefore they don't have to do any work. So they don't have to spend all the money on recording and the marketing because the individual's done it themselves. Yeah. And um, because because they're not doing well, you know, mate. I, I don't believe that theory. I believe they are doing well. And a way of... Um, making even more money again is to say, why should we go in and develop the artists? They're all doing it themselves. So let's just become distributors essentially and yeah. then pick pick them as they're doing well and go, hey, Rob, you know, we'd like to offer you a deal. And, and you go, but what could you offer me? I'm doing well. Well, we could offer you a million dollars worth of marketing. So the labels are becoming marketing firms and that's what they are. They're not recording companies as such uh, and so they're there to market and promote your product which I always did but that's all they do is moving forward and that's an extreme of thought that's coming that, that that's what the majors are becoming and now one side says that well that's great for independent artists uh, and the other side you know says well it's not good it, my own personal thoughts are it's not good in general because the majors used to pick up artists and develop them and, you know, whether you were one in that trillion, but, you know, they, they would sign artists. Whereas now <clears throat> it's, um, you're, it's all cannon fodder out there and it's, you know, um, you're doing all the hard lifting for the labels. And yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's a good thing because, therefore, what are the labels? They're marketing company, so they're going to be out there with every other marketing company. And then when you go on to, um, uh, excuse me, when you go on to um, social media and you see how many companies are approaching artists to help your Instagram account, help your TikTok account, help your YouTube. And a classic is watching YouTube uh, tutorials on, um, you know, how to oh, this is what's happening now. This is how you're going to get your YouTube streams up or this is how you're going to get your audio streams up. You know, it's a dime a dozen and they all talk the same uh, rubbish now. It's getting to that point of complete saturation. 
Um, and, um, you know, I, I kind of look at laneway music and oh, we hit 43,000 uh, subscribers on uh, YouTube and we, I think, yesterday hit 33,000 on Facebook. Uh, we just tipped over 33,000. And, but, they're, you know, they're not massive numbers, but they are organic numbers. And, um, uh, you know, we put up a post yesterday and within, I think it was within about four hours, it had hit 11,000 streams and about 400 likes and 140 shares. By this morning, it had risen to 25,000. I think it was, I don't know, 1,000 likes and 600 or 500 shares. They are massive numbers. But that's because our followers, uh, are all, it's organic. You know, there's, there's no um, bullshies about it. It's, it's, it's organic. And so... Yeah, the good thing about, I mean, the discussion here, my talks, when you talk about um, there's a sense of reality, to it. you're doing it, we're doing it, First hand, and you see the real numbers. Um, none of it's inflated, um, and it's all from you know, like the hard work. These guys Absolutely, over. it's the old ten thousand hours. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and it's persistence. You know, we we talk about that all the time, don't we, Rob? Persistence. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's not smoke and mirrors no. with somebody tell you something on in a digital medium. You know, like mm. I think that's what we talk about it every week. It. Um, on laneway talks, the well, reality. Well, yeah, you know, I, I I was having a think about what you and me spoke about the other day um, yep. about Rob's drum shed, and I thought what I want to do is I've got a playlist on our YouTube channel for Rob's drum shed, but I, yep. I I want you to provide me with one every week now by hook or crook. I want a I want a um uh, uh, a video clip. Now I know. And, and our aim is then to put end screens on them to dump them back to, uh, I don't mean that nastily dump them back, but to direct people back to Rob's drum shed. And then, uh, and, and if we start to get a good, a good number subscribing to Rob's drum shed, once we, you know, we pick a figure, let's say once we get it to a thousand, then we yeah. delete them off our channel. All right, because we don't want to bastardise your channel. But what we need at the moment is we need to populate your channel with subscribers. Yes. So I, I, I had a good think about that and thought, well, let's do that because I can profile it each week. Click the button. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and, and, and do that. So, but, you know, that means you've got to send me and it's a test, and we can come back to this in six months' time here and tell uh, the listeners, uh, you know, what the results have been like. All right? Well, I mean, they're sending you, you're talking about sending the link to the YouTube? Not website. the link, no. You've got to actually give me the video. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's a lot in that. The, you, the links, don't, YouTube don't like, don't like that. Even if it's, if it's going to your YouTube channel, they allow that because it's still within YouTube, but they don't give you as much um, penetration. Uh, where the penetration comes is when it's a video on your site and you're just trying to go out to people generally, all right, and you've got to understand our site is getting to 10,000-fold more than what yours is getting to. So we're only trying to get them to view it and go, here, subscribe, and the subscribe isn't Laneway Music. The subscribe has to be a link to Rob's drum shed. Now, yeah. I, I think, and I'm going to check this, is I think they force us to subscribe to our channel, but I, I think I can take that off. But I, they might. But anyway, I know I can, I know I can put another link on there to subscribe to your channel. All right, and let's use this as a list, litmus test to see if we can get those numbers up. Do you think? Because a lot of that. So videos that I do are taken from the YouTube channel and I like, can edit them and they're already on the YouTube channel. So the original source, trying to go back, I find tricky because a lot of it's edited on the YouTube channel or it's edited. Well, you should. well we, we want to educate you on that, not to do that. 
Yeah, I'm, but yeah, the original first video of Mole and then put them up on either YouTube and or because I used Vimeo because Vimeo was a, just a more secure site. Yes. Yeah, um, I know it is. Well, we'll talk about that off screen and we'll have a chat about it and we'll see how we can do it, okay? I'm yeah, going to use that. That's going to be a little trial of ours. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, even on um, even on our Facebook page, we can do that too. We can do a post each week and then it directs them back to you in the comments, of course, never in the post. And yeah. it's just another bit. And, you know, and we'll come back to it in six months and we'll analyse the data. So that's... that's uh, uh, that my, lo, lo, that was my thing for this week, you know, and it's a big issue. It took us a lot of hours to read this bots and, uh, yeah. and but I, I look, I, as I think I, I said earlier, you know, it's we're not going to win with this because there'll be another 10 of those. There'll be another 100 of those. There'll be another 1,000, you know, yeah. so we got rid of one. But it was so big I had to act quickly because the numbers could have gone ballistic for the band straight away and they probably wouldn't have even got a first strike. They probably would have been banned, you know. So I, ha I had to work quickly with the band. Um, yeah. But, you know, uh, once again, I don't like the situation where that's what Spotify will do. They don't converse with you first and they'll go, well, how, ca how could we do that? Um, well, I would have thought it would be pretty easy. They could automate it through AI that when they pick these things up, it sends an email directly to the owners, the artist, and says, well, you, you're going to get pinged. Have a look at this, right? They, they, of course they could do something. But anyway, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Or it would as their platform. They should monitor it more securely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so anyway, uh, that, that, look, that was a, that's a big issue and everybody needs to be really well aware of it and, uh, you know, and see where they're going. Um, the other thing uh, happening, you know, we've had a, a lot of, because we haven't been on for a couple of weeks, We've had a lot of releases. When I have a look here at what we've got, um, you know, we've had uh, Family Affair, which is uh, Charlie Marshall and his son, Louis, with Almighty Carousel, which was a great video clip, actually. Uh, we've, yeah. ha we've had uh, um, Mississippi Shakedown with Dine, 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 which the video did really well. I think it did about 30,000 views. Um then we had, uh, and there's a new one coming from Mississippi Shakedown in the next three weeks, I think, four weeks. Um, then there was uh, Angela McCloy, who is a new artist, who put out the Lonely Hearts Club. Uh, and um, that came out, and that's, I think, did about 6,000 video views, which is really good for the first track. Um, and then we've got tomorrow coming out the second single for Uppercut. Now, the first single did quite well, did a couple of thousand streams. Um, you know, people might go, oh, yeah, laughing. Well, remember, you know, it's a brand new band. They don't have a million dollars. And they're working it hard themselves as band members with all their friends. And, I, you know, we keep having regular discussions with them about keep pushing, keep pushing, yeah persistence get all your friends on there don't let them tell you that they streamed it because we can see uh, I need to see the physical streams because they come through and it's kind of working for them so now we've got the second video coming out and the second audio track they're a hard rock band you know very hard rock uh, and so um, we'll, we'll help keep helping them then we have also Remora who are kind of a sta well established uh, a violation is uh uh, the track and um, uh, you know we'll see how they go but they're established they get thousands of streams a month anyway you know tens of thousands and uh, and then another cattle truck I believe which was a live a live track from when uh, Paul Janoskas was in Saigon and playing in Saigon um, there is various others coming up after that we're, we're still busy right up until the 31st of December is the last release um, and that's uh, and you, you do release then because you know people are listening to music when they're on holidays it's a great time to you know beat the majors at their own game um, so plenty happening there and plenty of videos too by the way then we have Laneway Red Rob 
and yep. laneway red uh, uh, is chugging along now I I'll keep saying this to people laneway red is a is a, a project which is going to take us a couple of years to get really established because we're building trust in the platform and we're enhancing it and there's a lot of enhancements coming we had a board meeting uh, two weeks ago and there's a whole other heap of enhancements coming to it within the structure of what's up there now let alone then the merch coming the ticketing coming and everything else that's coming on that uh, right. and they'll be next year but uh, there's some great new enhancements to exploring the artist um, and so what you ingest, if you get, it'd be, this will be going way too far back for younger audience and the MySpace days. And I, I am very fixated in my head because I loved MySpace. And I loved MySpace because they actually tried to develop the booklet that you get in a CD or in a vinyl and they tried to have that online. And, you know, for various reasons it completely collapsed. News Corp buying it was one of the biggest reasons. Uh, too big, not being, you know, knowing what they're doing. So, um, but that, that I, I want to be able to give that info. So, oh, you know, <clears throat> I want to be able to show a description of the song to the punter. I want to be able to show the lyrics quite clearly. Lyrics are out there, I know that, but they're not that common. But I want them on ours that they're common. You can just go show me the lyrics. Um, I want to know... Uh, um, uh, you know the the bio on the band, which you can get, and you know that you can get that on Spotify, and then to get the list of credits. Now, yeah, you get credits on Spotify, but it's only four or five things on there. But I mean a complete list of credits that we used to put in the CD booklet, or on the back of the vinyl, or inside the vinyl sleeve, and you know really go through all the credits, Rob, um, of who helped make the album and you know and produce it and yada 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 so yeah. you know that's all coming and it's it's getting programmed now um, uh, you know some of the other fantastic things that we're developing with it um, are, uh, um, let me think about this this is about pushing out if you if you are it won't apply to artists yet it will later but if you come on as a label you can push out to YouTube and Facebook. Now, we'll be testing that for six months as Laneway Music because we're a label on Laneway Red. And uh, the time saving with that and what it does is phenomenal. So there's some really good stuff happening uh, and it, we just keep progressing along and pushing the name. So that's from me, Rob. What do you got for the week? Um, I just, I'm in rehearsal mode and continually doing the um, shorts in my YouTube channel, trying to keep up with all that. Um, and going through the year, the Laneway Talks episodes, uh, you know, that we've been going through, just having a look at the data from that and the topics that we talk about each week. And, uh, you know, we get a lot of feedback from people too, which is good. So um, I'm just trying to add around how we can actualize that for you know maybe topic discussion in the future. Well, I'll do uh, I'll do a cutaway here um, as we're speaking to the the grouse, which is in this sense it was Michael Hill. Now it's going to become the grouse. So to the video. So everybody um, here, we're just cutting away to the video uh, yep. for uh, 10, 15 seconds, and uh, and. Then the other project, and that, as you just saw, everybody, is the video that will be coming out for the grouse. Uh, but what we I'll show now also is show, you know, 15 seconds odd of um, the New Virgin Soldiers uh, track, Another yeah. Way. And yeah. uh, uh, as you so, see that, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you put a grab of the cup there as well because it's fantastic. Yes, um, I'll put a cover. I'll put the... I'll, Oh, I'm going to put the cover up now, so we've got that up too. Um, so I've been... worked that artist. I work with Blake Shepherd um, quite a bit um, with concepts and just thinking about uh, and workshopping the ideas for the the music and the song. So there's a there's a fair bit of thought goes into all of that. Um, you know, 
Uh, it's not just when you see the artwork, which you will from this clip, um, you kind of go, wow, there's a lot of work in conceptualising that, a lot of work and the layering to get it up to what it is. So, mm. Yeah, this one. It's good. Yeah. So, yeah, as uh, you know, you'll be, uh, it'll be quite a bit of new music from Rob. And, um, and as I said before, we'll try and work on this Rob's drum shed uh, idea of mine, see if we can get more exposure there. It takes, you know, it, like anything, it takes dedication. You know, I'm so busy and you're so busy, we've got to make it happen. Uh, and the only reason we probably haven't done it before is because we're so busy. And again, you've got to make it happen. You actually physically have to do it. And there's only so many hours in the day, you know. Yeah, there is. I mean, that, that, in those videos, you've got to remember there's like 30 lessons in the first syllabus and then there's another 28 lessons in the second syllabus. So there's 58 video clips and PDFs everything on my website, um, which is robsdrumshed.com, um, that I have access to. Now I'm thinking about maybe talking with you, Vince, about opening that up so people can have a look at that and having some way to do that. I'll speak with my web designer on that as well. Oh. well I had a big meeting with yesterday and that's going well. Because we took a lot of time to design that website and I wish people would go and have a look at it. Um, as I said, robtrunchard.com because there's 10 plus years work in just getting it up to what it is now today. So, um, And then oh. you've got to... Well, you've got, the you, you've got the assets there, to yeah. uh, which is the basis for the whole thing. And yeah, yeah. then you look to moving forward, you know, and, and what you're presenting moving forward with Rob's drum shed. Uh, so, you know, um, I mean, it, it's just a lot. It's a lot of work, you know. It's yeah. a lot of work. Put the book up, Rob's drum shed. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we'll put, I'll, I'll, put up a, um, I'll put up a screen. Rob's drum shed and whatever, and so uh, so everybody can see it here. I'm just putting that up now, and uh, you'll you'll be able to just embed it in your mind. Now, of course, it's for drummers, uh, but you know there's a lot of young budding drummers out there, and I would very much like that it's Australia based with an Australian based drummer um, who's got you know 40 years worth of experience. 50 years worth of experience uh, in 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 the drum sphere. Anyway, we'll get on to yep. that. Um, cool. And, um, well, that's about it from me. What have you got, Rob? Anything else? No, I reckon we're pretty much done. We've it was, about... look, that was, a, that was an intense kind of 20 minutes there on those bots, and that's a real problem. I mean, it's a real problem. I, I hate everything about it. Not only you've got to try and create music, Rob, you've then got to battle the people that are going to destroy that hard work of yours simply through trying to hold you to ransom. And that's not Spotify, that's the bot, the, the bot curators, <laughs> you know, those playlist curators. But Spotify doesn't really help. They're not really helping with it, you know. Yes. Now, they, the did, they did in our case, but uh, we had to really fight hard. Really trying to break take back control of your own product. It's going to be interesting over the next couple of years, I think, very interesting to go, uh, well, where is the industry going? And what you just said then, taking back control. And therefore, remember, I've always said, Rob, in discussions that uh, you use Spotify as your marketing tool. And so you've got to be there. That's your marketing tool. But it's not where you're going to make any money. This is on the on the indie side. But... Um, you know, taking back control of your music, does that mean we're going to have fragmented fragmented uh, streaming sites? So there is a heavy metal streaming site coming, um, which is going to be dedicated to heavy metal. Cool. Right? right? And if I go into Spotify to try and do heavy metal, I'm not sure I get a good cross-section of what's really heavy metal. Um, and that relates to all the other genres. But... Is this what's going to happen and it will defragment Spotify and bring down their market um, power and bring down the power of the majors who are, who are out there, uh, not for the artists, but to maintain their leisurely lifestyles 
and you know their jobs. You said that before. Oh, I, I hate it. You know, I hate it. Um, I know. How Seen much is enough? Yeah. So you know, and it, and dodgy dealings all the way. Uh, anyway, um, all right, Rob. We'll uh, we'll catch up uh, next week. And as the audience always say, <laughs> they're laughing at us, mate. They're laughing at us. But then I'll get the crowd in there and the crowd will say, we've done the right thing and we're speaking the truth. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what, what did you say about the show? A lot about nothing? A little bit about something? Yeah, yeah. We, we talk about a lot about nothing and a little bit about something. Yeah. All right, mate. See you later. See ya. Bye.